Lord, thank you. Jesus is King. We love you. Thanks for this great privilege, opportunity. It's so good to be with family, Lord Jesus. The family of God. So awesome to see a flourishing church here in this peninsula region in Karam Downs. We, we're so grateful, Father. We love your church. Local church is your idea. The house of God. This, the Lord's Day today, this Sunday, the Lord's Day. And we honor you this day, Lord God, like we do every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, tonight I want to share a few things for those that don't know me. As Alex said, my name is Daniel Hagen, married to beautiful Chelsea Hagen. Uh, we've got four wonderful children. Chelsea's leading our Sunshine Coast Church. And this morning we had our young guns take over the service. So I don't know how that went, but from all reports, it was pretty wild and pretty awesome. So my young son, Caleb, led the communion message so I got to see all the people were tagging me on uh, Instagram of him sharing he's only 13 years old but it was really cool to for the for the first time sharing the word of God around communion that was awesome my daughter Esther's here she does distance education so she gets to um, tag along sometimes when we do these trips she's probably hanging out with the cousin somewhere and uh, but yeah we're really enjoying what God is doing in Queensland so we started here as Alex mentioned almost 11 years ago in Frankston. And uh, it's, it's amazing what the Lord has done in, in the last 11 years. And it's a double celebration uh, in May. We celebrate our birthday, but it also happens to fall on Pentecost Sunday. So it's a double celebration. And I think quite fitting, considering our name is Fire Church. For those wondering why we call, are called Fire Church, uh, it really does come from a number of scriptures, but one that I can think of right now is John the Baptist said, I baptize in water, but one will come after me that will baptize in the Holy Spirit and fire. So fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So we're really unashamedly um, Pentecostal. We are unashamed. We're not trying to hide our Pentecostalism. <laughs> we love speaking in tongues. We love the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, and we don't hide it away in, in the little small groups off to the side during the week. We want God to manifest freely every week. Amen? Amen? And so I think we'll always be Pentecostal. I think everyone should be Pentecostal. Um, partly because God's still pouring out His Spirit. Where does the idea of the denomination of Pentecostalism come from? Well, it's, it's just people that embrace what happened in Acts chapter 2 when God poured out His Spirit. There was the beginning of the fulfillment. It didn't end there, it didn't start and end there. It was the beginning of the fulfillment, Acts chapter 2. They were all in one accord, 120 people in the upper room. God poured out His Spirit. And that was the Acts 1-8 power that we needed to fulfill the mission, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So it hasn't finished. And we still need the power of the Holy Spirit today, amen, because the mission's not over. The devil's not slowing down. In fact, the Bible says that he knows his time is short, so he's going even more crazy. We look around the world, we know, no, that's true. It's more and more intense, so we need the power of God more than ever. Amen? He saved the best for last, best for last Tyrone. Amen. Did anyone believe that? He saves the, the, the latter rain. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Amen and amen. So I want to share a couple of updates tonight. We are now in Queensland, as we mentioned. You guys so beautifully sent us off in 2021. And uh, there are now five churches in Queensland. So you met Michael, which is cool. He, he said, this just feels like family. So if you need places to go on holidays in Queensland now, there's, you can go right up and down the East Coast. You can do a tour and visit all your fire family. It's amazing. We, you can start on the Gold Coast. The beautiful work happening there on the Gold Coast. And you can move into Brisbane South. It's a new church that's just about to officially launch a great team there. Uh, Brisbane North. We're on the Sunshine Coast. And if you want to go where it's really warm and crocodiles... Uh, Rockhampton. Actually went fishing with the pastor in Rockhampton in the Fitzroy River. Caught some barramundi and saw a crocodile. So if you want to do that, then you can do that too. But uh, isn't, isn't God awesome? Their fire family is spreading uh, all over the country and it's, and it's amazing. Tonight I want to give you an update on what we're doing with Awakening Australia. Um, yeah, come on Jesus. Actually, Pastor Alex, you mentioned Jerry Savelle. He's also a hero of the faith of mine as well. And Kenneth Hagin, a lot of those word of faith 
um, people that were just amazing. They, they get a lot of uh, criticism and perhaps in some ways there's been a little bit of um, maybe hyper emphasis on certain things. But I think people like Jerry, some of the old school guys are just so on the word and so amazing. And Dr. Oral Roberts, you mentioned him. Well, his legacy is still continuing today. And the Oral Roberts University were the first people they heard about this Next Awakening Australia campaign. And you spoke of generosity and giving and faithfulness in finances. They uh, sent our first donation, which really helped us to be able to sign the contract and get the ball rolling with this. And it worked out to be exactly 111,000 Australian dollars from Oral Roberts University. So he's gone to glory now, but his legacy and the work continues and so generous. And they just heard about what's happening here in Australia. So the Americans got behind it, which is awesome. So for anyone that doesn't know anything about Awakening Australia, I want to show you uh, or I want to bring your attention to the screen to give you some highlights of what took place at the Marvel Stadium here in Melbourne in the end of 2018. And then I want to talk a little bit about the Brisbane campaign. So let's throw to the screen now if we can. is on a crash collision course with Jesus Christ. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. yourself in an atmosphere and environment where the power of God can move through you. When Jesus calls you to himself, he calls you to a life of faith, calls you to a life of worship, calls you to a life of praise. Telling you that God wants to snatch you out of the fire. for Melbourne in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the church in the name of Jesus. We pray for unity in our church like never before in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, for the church to have courage and boldness to see that you are alive, that you do reach the lost. You do change hearts. You do transform lives. You do reach nations in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every church in Australia that you would give us the awakening of our hearts, that you are ready and willing to move in Australia in the name of Jesus. Awesome. So Brisbane, September, we planned it so that the dates would fall on the uh, school holidays for Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, the last week of September. It'd be wonderful to see everyone there. I know it's in Brisbane this time, but it really is a national event. We've got people that are registering from all over the country. I think we may have a slide that we'll put up. If you want to get your phones out and just have a look at that QR code, it'll take you to the website or just remember awakeningaustralia.org. The registrations are now open, so you might want to consider accommodation, maybe connect with some of our fire church family along that east coast, and uh, and perhaps you could stay with some of them. And but it's going to be a wonderful time. You know, I'm always hearing testimonies, not just from people that were that didn't know Jesus, that found Jesus as a result of these gospel campaigns, but Christians that were in that environment that had just had radical encounters with Jesus and the whole life changed. 
I was in Adelaide recently ministering with uh, Iris, with Heidi Baker and a few people at the Adelaide Convention Center earlier this year. And I had a gentleman come running up to me and he said, Daniel, Daniel, I've been hoping to meet you and I, w- I wanted to share something that happened. I was at the 2018 Marvel Stadium event and he said, you can ask my friends, I'm, I'm actually quite conservative when it comes to the move of the Spirit and when it comes to the Holy Spirit and experiencing the Holy Spirit. He said, I see people falling down, but for me, it just never really happened. But he said, during the worship, he said, I was standing there just worshiping um, and I just had my hands out and I was, he said, I was right down the back of the stadium. And he said, someone got up and said something about the Holy Spirit. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, he felt the power of God just go through his body. And he said, he literally, he said, I'm not lying to you. He said, I literally got picked up and thrown three and a half meters back. And he said, it just rocked me. He said, but when, he said, you can ask my friends, he said, this doesn't happen to me. He said, but when I got up, something changed. And I like that. Now, I like the manifestations of the Spirit. I love it when God breaks out in joy. I love people getting rocked and, you know, when people can't get off the floor and just the experience of the power of the Holy Spirit is awesome. But if it's just experience and it doesn't bear fruit, then what's the point? Amen? So I want to be a a Pentecostal that does something with the Holy Spirit. Not just holy rollers, but holy go-getters. Amen? So he said, when I got back to Adelaide after that experience, he said, all of a sudden, God just started to give me downloads And I just had this really strong desire to start charities in my city in Adelaide. And God gave him the blueprint. And so he said he started three different charities in Adelaide. And they're all really successful, making huge impact in their city there with the poor, with the broken, with the homeless in Adelaide. And he said as a result of that, uh, last year, he was nominated as the Citizen of the Year in Adelaide. Not only was he nominated, but he went on to win and become the citizen of the year in Adelaide. Isn't that awesome? And he said he attributes everything that took place to that one touch from the Holy Spirit. And so something happens when you get in that environment, when you get like tens of thousands of people together and we're all going after God and hungering God, something happens. Some of you may remember Nicole and she's a high jumper. Does anyone remember Nicole? I think she may have even come and shared here. But she came to visit us last year and to share her story about what happened at the Marvel Stadium as well. Um, She's a a high jumper, quite a well-known high jumper now. But in the early days in 2018, she had a desire to be in the Olympics, but her heights that she was jumping, there was no way that she was going to be able to make it into the Olympics. She was just kind of like a champion in her local regional level, but wasn't getting the heights to be able to go any further than that. But when she got in the atmosphere, in the presence of the Holy Spirit at the Marvel Stadium, she said she went into a vision and in the vision, she said the Lord showed her a technique adjustment. Just a really simple technique adjustment in a vision. And she said after the event finished, she went back and spoke to a trainer and just started practicing this technique adjustment. And It wasn't long before she launched into these amazing heights. She ended up becoming the silver medalist of the Olympics. She was an Australian Olympian, won the silver medal at the Olympics. And now she continues to um, get better and better and better. She has the Australian um, high jump record now. Uh, She's gone on to continue to win tournaments in the lead up to the next Olympics. And she's now the world indoor champion. And she's at the moment, she is um, leading in terms of the heights that she's jumping all around the world. So isn't that awesome? Just one vision in the presence in that environment and your life can change. So dream big, amen? God can do anything. If there's a desire in your heart, if He's put a dream or a vision or a passion in your heart, seek Him, amen? And uh, he, he wants to, He's your biggest cheerleader. He wants to help you to get there and show you things. And So glory to God. All right, tonight I want to talk a little bit about, um, so we talked about what's happening in Queensland as a national ministry. We're excited to celebrate our 11th birthday. We talked a little bit about this campaign that a fire church always has such a big part to play. And this is not just a, this is not a fire church event. This is, uh, we would call it an ecumenical evangelistic event. 
in terms of it's not one denomination. We, we join together with the Baptists, the Presbyterians, just everyone, anyone and everyone that loves Jesus and we come together for the gospel, which is awesome. But tonight I want to extend and just give you an update on some other things that we're doing as a ministry. There are two nations that I believe over the next couple of years the Lord has highlighted and I'm going to be personally involved in helping bring impact into these two nations. In 2000, and I'm not sure if it was the end of 2013, 2014, it was roughly around that time. I was living in Cranbourne North. It was the early stages of the Frankston uh, church plant. And I was on the couch. I remember laying on the couch, just had the worship music on, just worshiping Jesus. And I went into a vision. And for me, like, The Lord speaks through dreams. That's something that the Lord has directed our whole ministry over the years through dreams. It's not the only way that God speaks, but He certainly does speak through dreams. And so I I always pay attention when the Lord does give me a a dream. But on this occasion, it was a vision. I don't get a lot of visions like this. So I made a real note to study out the vision. And, uh, and still to this day, I can just, if I just close my eyes, I can see the vision and I, it, it really does mean so much to me. And I feel like it's an unfulfilled word that the Lord has given me in 2014, which is 10 years ago now. In the vision, I'll try to explain it to you as best I can, but I saw the face of Jesus over two nations. Now, <laughs> I'm not the best at geography or history. So I don't know a lot about these two nations. I'll tell you the two nations, it's India and Pakistan. As a kid, all I really knew in terms of India and Pakistan was that they were good cricketers. (laughs) And that Pakistan had a few fast bowlers and India was pretty good, some good batters and spin bowlers. But I had no idea in terms of the history, the geography. I didn't know anything about Hinduism, the Islamic faith that dominated Pakistan. Um, But when I saw the vision, I actually saw the border And the face of Jesus was over the border of India and Pakistan. And I saw tears rolling down the face of Jesus, falling into Pakistan and also falling into India. And I immediately had a sense of the interpretation that the tears, they represented the compassion of Jesus. It wasn't just limited to the compassion. It also represented an outpouring. The tears represented an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that God was pouring out His Spirit in these two nations. But in terms of compassion, um, if you study the life of Jesus, you'll see that there's something that consistently pops up in the Gospels. And it, it talks about Jesus being moved with compassion. He did what He did, not out of religious duty, but He was moved with compassion for us as people. And so I saw that compassion in the spirit and I knew that God's heart was really beating for the people of India and Pakistan. So I began to, after that vision, I began to kind of study out the geography. Then I I discovered that they actually do border one another. It might seem weird to you that I don't know that, but I honestly didn't know that. And where the, the border actually is in the north part of India and Pakistan, they actually term it no man's land. And right now there are armies that are camped on either side of the border and there's been a lot of turmoil between the two nations. They were once, they were once together, but Pakistan broke away and they were predominantly Islamic and they broke away into their own independent nation roughly in the 1940s. But I want to talk a little bit about, after that vision, I, I made some attempts to go to the nation. I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? Do you want me to go there? And actually in 2014, I made an attempt to go into Pakistan and got turned back at Abu Dhabi in the UAE um, because of my documentation and they knew that I was a Christian and the embassy actually said, no, you can't come into Pakistan, you're going to have to go back. So I was actually stopped. I made every effort, but it just wasn't to be at that time because sometimes God can speak to you, can give you a vision, can put something on your heart, but it's not the timing. And sometimes we need to process what the timing is, but don't give up on the vision. If He's spoken to you for a reason, hold on to it. But sometimes it's timing, it's planning, it's preparation. And I realized that in Pakistan and India, like you, you really, if you're going to minister there, you've got to know who's who because there's a lot of corruption, deception, and, um, and it's actually quite dangerous in those nations as well. Have you guys been watching the news and all the crazy stuff that's happening in Sydney? Like two major knife attacks. Is, you guys hear about that? 
not necessarily related, although demonically they are related because who's behind that is, is demons. But in the case of the bishop, Mari Ma, it was certainly um, uh, religiously driven. It was Islamic terrorism. And these young teenagers have been, uh, there's a whole group of them apparently that are in Sydney that um, have been um, brainwashed into ex an extreme form of Islam. Um, but if you read the Quran, it's actually not so extreme. It's actually quite normal. And if you go to places like Pakistan uh, and other Islamic nations around the world, you'll see that what we witness on the news with Bishop Mari Mara is actually quite normal for our Christian brothers and sisters in, in for example, the nation of, of Pakistan. But it was quite horrific, wasn't it? The footage. It was quite a miracle that he survived. You know, the knife didn't actually open on the first four attempts. Um, the knife didn't open and it wasn't until they actually hit the ground that he was stabbed, but he survived. Isn't that amazing? And um, what I really love is the response of the Bishop Mari Ma. Um, from all reports, he got up, which is a miracle that he got up. And the first thing he did was lay hands on the man that just tried to kill him, pray for him and say, I forgive you, son. And, and then moved on and, and they had to take him to, to hospital. Uh, I can understand the anger of the Assyrians in the area and the people in the area, there ended up being riots that took place. You know, so when, I, when I saw that, I thought of the response of Jesus. Uh, sorry, the response of Peter. You know, when Peter, when they, when they came for Jesus, Peter got out, of his, got out his knife and cut the ear off the soldier. And Jesus actually, Jesus' response to that was to pick up the ear of the soldier and heal the soldier and say, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. That's, that's, it's not eye for an eye, is it? And that's the difference with Christianity. And, and so I, that kind of woke me up a little bit. You know, I was feeling a little bit down in the dumps about a certain, a couple of certain personal things that we've been working through. And seeing that sort of woke me up a little bit to say, come on, man, we are in a fight. We're in a spiritual battle right now. And all around the world, people are, are suffering um, in such extreme ways. And, and Pakistan is, is one of those places. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing in the nation. We plan on, we've got some great, now over 10 years, we've got some great connections there. And we plan on going into Pakistan together for a massive Jesus festival. And we're looking at November and gathering literally hundreds of thousands of people together to preach the gospel. But we're also doing small things. We want to reach the villages. And there's still so many unsaved people in the, in the nation of Pakistan. You know, Australia has something estimated 26 million people as a population. Did you know Pakistan has 253 million people and only 1.27% are Christian. There's a lot of work to do in some of these nations around the world. And still, from all reports, from the bishops and the different people that I'm working with, there are many areas, many villages that still haven't heard the gospel yet, unreached areas. And one of the ways that we're able to reach them is actually is helping them practically. Some of them don't have clean water to drink. And uh, I want to show you just something recently that we were able to partner with uh, one of the bishops that we have a relationship with now in uh, one of the villages in Pakistan. So could we show that video that you airdropped? Hey, Not I, I hope you're all doing well. I just want to make this video because where I am... Not that one, sorry. Well, it's mind-blowing. I'm at the it's the other one. We'll go to that one at the end. It didn't download. The air dropped one. Only photos. James might be able to help there. Awesome. Anyway, we'll go we'll go into that in a minute. Maybe I'll maybe I'll talk about Pakistan in a moment as well. So um, we're also working in Pakistan. Does anyone remember Andy Cannon, our friend from the UK, evangelist? Well, he's doing some work in India that we're also partnering with. And uh, I want to read some statistics as we maybe get some of the, the Pakistan, that Pakistan video. We'll throw to that shortly. But let me just, 
again, this is some pretty horrific statistics, but I think I want to get real with everyone and just, you know, sometimes in our Australian bubble, we don't realise what the rest of the world's going through, but here's an area that we're targeting right now too. So India has a very high volume of child trafficking. As many as one child disappears every eight minutes, according to the National Crime Records Bureau. Just to give you some context, India has now the largest population in the world. They overtook China in 2022. I'm trying to put, with the Communist China Party, actually put some restrictions on being able to have children. You can only have one child policy. And as a result, 2022, India took over as the largest population now. So it's, there. there's people everywhere, but there's so much craziness going on. In some cases, children are taken from their homes to be brought and sold in the market. In other cases, children are tricked into the hands of traffickers by being presented an opportunity for a job, when in reality, upon arrival, they become enslaved. In India, there are many children trafficked for various reasons, such as labor, begging, and sadly, sexual exploitation. Because of the nature of this crime, it's hard to track. And due to the poor enforcement of laws, it, it is difficult to prevent. Due to the nature of this crime, it is only possible to have estimates of figures regarding the issue. India is a prime area for child trafficking to occur. As many of those trafficked are from uh, travel through or destined to go to India. So in a moment, you're going to hear from Andy and he's working between um, he's working close to the border in India and Nepal, actually. So through most of the trafficking occurs within the country, there's also a significant number of children trafficked from Nepal and, Banglad and Bangladesh. There are many different causes that lead to the child trafficking, with the primary reason being poverty, weak law enforcement, and a lack of good quality public education. Um, in, from what I understand, there's... It just happens all the time and no one's doing anything about it. And there are organizations that are trying, but our friend, we always work through relationship with people we know, but our friend Andrew has been working on this project. We haven't really been all that public about it, but we feel to from time to time. And Andy is working with the team on the ground to literally save children from being trafficked right now. And we've got a whole team and the children have got places where they can stay in homes and and so can we throw to that video now the one that we just had on before with Andy speaking? I hope you're all doing well. I just want to make this video because where I am, well, it's mind-blowing. I'm at the border checkpoint of Nepal and India there. And as you can see, people are just walking through. It's an open border. And this is where the human trafficking takes place. It is so busy. Look at it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people passing every single day. There's a team here apprehending the traffickers, stopping them, intercepting the trafficking. Guys, I need your help to continue to come back here so I can be feet on the ground, hands and feet, to help put a stop to innocent children being passed through that open border. Will you get behind this work? If you so, I'll go. I'll keep coming back. I will spend time here and I will work with a team that is already established here. God, God's kids are not for sale. Look at this. They just keep passing through. This place is hopeless and we need hope. And I want to bring and I want to be a messenger of hope, but I need your help. Will you send me here? Will you send me back here? Get behind me financially. Thank you, pray about it. Please, don't believe the lie that a small amount will not be useful. Every amount will be useful. It'll send me back here to help the people of Nepal, because God's kids are not for sale. There's five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old boys and girls who are, being, who are being trafficked through this to be used as human slaves and as sex slaves. No, this has got to stop. 
we have an opportunity to bring this to an end. So I need your help. God bless you, and I'll keep giving you reports. God bless. All right, so yeah, we're, we're thankful, aren't we, that there's something happening. Let's show a couple of the photos. Like in, in a small period of time that Andrew was there to, for two weeks, they were able to have quite a lot of impact on the ground there. In comparison to what's happening, it feels like a drop in the ocean, but something's better than nothing, isn't it? Like even if we're able to rescue one child, it's pretty amazing. But when we can, we'll throw to the screen of some of those photos um, uh, from India just to give you a little bit of a look at the team. And also, now, obviously, for for reasons that you would probably understand, we've had to block out the faces of the of the children. You can see Andy there, but this was these were the children that were rescued in just a two week period, which is awesome. We have a wonderful team on the ground that's working uh, with these children now. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, let's thank you, Jesus. This is the team here that's working um, with Andy, and let's continue on awesome team and they're actually looking at employing some other people to um, to go into India and specifically into some of the prostitution rings to pull out particularly children that are being exploited in some of those areas too. So it is dangerous work as well on many levels. So one thing we can do is, as Andy said, if you sow, he'll go. Um, but also please be keeping the team in prayer as well. And it's going to be my responsibility over the next couple of years to keep us all updated as to what's uh, happening to in, this is going to be one of the projects in in India. But this is why we have the Holy Spirit, isn't it? It's not just so we can sit around and sing songs. Let's, let's work together to bring impact and change the world. Amen. In India right now, it's actually illegal to convert someone out of another faith into Christianity. Do you know that? So not only is it, Dangerous work because, um, man, it's there's criminals that are in charge of this, like serious people that are in charge of this uh, crime ring. And so you're interrupting their crime ring. So it's very dangerous work. But it's also in terms of the government there, if you, um, if you convert someone out of Hinduism, it's actually illegal you can do jail time. So anyone want to go on a mission trip? Let's do it. Come on, Jesus. But it'll be awesome. God will protect us. Amen. So we're going to be going into India and we're also going to be um, going into Pakistan, as I mentioned. But uh, we work together with Compassion. Has anyone heard of Compassion? Uh, a number of us here sponsor children, which is wonderful. They do great work all over the world, a Christian organization. But they actually got ran out of India uh, in recent times. And so they had a big work happening in India. But they said, no, no one with a Christian brand is allowed to come into our nation. So they're still doing things without the brand organically because they work through local churches, but they can't have Christian organizations directly involved in India right now. So we really need to pray. But from my experience over the years, and when you read the Bible, wherever nations are heavily persecuted, where the enemy tries to stop the gospel, they're often the nations where it breaks out and it explodes. You look at the book of Acts, every time the, the enemy tried to hit the people of God, it just caused the gospel to spread because you can't stop the work of God. Amen? Amen. All right, how are we looking for, um, for Pakistan, James? Does that look all right now? This is something in more recent times that we've been able to do for the nation of Pakistan. As I mentioned, we want to do some very large festivals and win a lot of souls to Jesus. And uh, But we also want to, practically help and be the hands and feet in some of the villages too. So let's throw to the recent work that we're able to do in Pakistan. I'll just commentate a little bit as we go through. This is the dirty water. This was their normal in the village to go and just collect water, the dirty water here. And this is actually quite common in Pakistan. In fact, Pakistan is the third most water stressed country in the world. I mentioned before we have an estimate of 26 million as a population for the whole nation. Well, in Pakistan, 21 million people lack access to clean water close to home. And around 25 million people in Pakistan still practice open defecation simply because they don't have the, the toilet systems like we do, which further threatens the country's vulnerable water supplies. So this is one really powerful way to be able to reach a, a community and particularly unreached communities is to help with clean water. So 
we as a national ministry were able to support uh, the bishop who we've been in relationship with now. We actually had him with us with our large worship event on the Sunshine Coast. And uh, we were able to support him and his team to build a water well to enable clean water this into is the village. Pipe, and they will be bring from to the other side. There is the drilling, the water pump, and they will be bring pipe into village, and then they will be drink the clean water from the other side. Pretty easy to take for granted, isn't it? What we have available to us in this nation. In a minute, you'll hear from the bishop. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Khadim Bhutto from Pakistan and uh, greetings from everyone, especially for the Pastor Daniel who have to supported us and donate that water tap for the Pakistani nation. And it's very thankful the Jesus Kingdom Ministry and uh, Jonah Delight and we are working for the needy and poor people and that is not just for one time. I hope it will be continue blessing from you and you will be always stand with us and stand with our nation and may God bless you all. Awesome, that's generally the gist of that video. So give it up for Jesus and... Thank you, Fire Church, for your generosity. We we're able to bring impact like that. So I want to continue to update everybody. One of the other things we're working on is with Trent. So the workbook Fortify, has anyone got a copy of that Fortify book? We have uh, some available here. It's the newest book that I've just published. And uh, it's designed for small groups or for families where you can study out the scriptures together. So it's not so much a book like the Ignite book, but it's a workbook. And we've now translated it into the main language, Urdu, in Pakistan. And we're about to put it in the hands of 2,000 uh, pastors that the bishop helps lead, which is pretty cool in Karachi. So let's give it up for Jesus for that. So we're training, equipping, helping practically. And at the end of the year, around November, we're still finalizing details, but we plan on gathering literally hundreds of thousands of people in Pakistan, like the Billy Graham days, and preach the gospel and see miracles and see the name of Jesus lifted high in the midst of, uh, you know, potential persecution in a very small percentage of Christians, Jesus is going to be glorified. Amen. So we, we're looking at taking a small team across too. So perhaps if that's on your heart, um, it'll have to be people that are experienced, but we do plan on training people and going consistently into these nations as well. But I want to take you to a couple of scriptures to finish off and then I want to finish with some prayer. Is that okay? So Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, if you've got your Bibles, let's turn there now. Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. What is Jesus saying here? When we help the broken the downcast, whether it's here in Australia, whether it's in Pakistan, India, when we 
partner with the compassion of heaven and we help people, Jesus is actually saying we're doing it unto him. Who wants to worship Jesus? Sometimes when we say, who wants to worship Jesus, we think we're about to get up, clap hands and sing another song. Because that's one form of worship. It's a beautiful way to worship. I love it. But here's a really pure way to worship Jesus, isn't it? This is not churchianity. This is biblical Christianity where we're helping the broken and the outcasts. It's always been a mandate of fire church. That's why we started on the streets of Frankston because it was the compassion of heaven that compelled us to plant the church. It's always been a big part of why we do what we do. Amen? So if we want to worship Jesus, one way, one powerful, pure way to do that is to help the least of these, what society calls the least of these. To God, they're not the least. To God, they're equal. To Everyone's equal in God's eyes. He loves everyone. Amen? But when we help people that are downcast, that have less than us, we're actually doing it unto Jesus. He loves it. It's a form of worship unto Him. Let's go now to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3. And it says, Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. What does that mean? Well, we as a local church, we're described in Scripture as being the body of Christ. We're a local body, but we're also connected to the wider body of Christ. So spiritually, our brothers and sisters right now are literally in chains and many of them are in prison. They have their churches burnt down. What we experienced on the news in Sydney is a regular occurrence in nations like this. And the Bible actually commands us to remember people that are in chains. Remember our brothers and sisters. It's so easy to be caught up in our bubble here in Caram Downs, in Frankston, on the Sunshine Coast. It's so beautiful. We're so blessed, aren't we? And there's nothing wrong with that. God wants us to be blessed, but we have a responsibility with the blessing that we have to be able to impact the nations for Jesus. Man, it breaks my heart to know that there are still so many people around the world that haven't even really heard the gospel properly. So as a national movement, it's really been on my heart to work together to be wise in the way we do it, but to bring real kingdom impact to these nations. So as I said, it's going to be my responsibility over the next few years to, to really work together to bring impact in some of these other nations. It doesn't mean we forget Australia or our local work. That just keeps going. It's not either or, it's both and more. Amen? And we want to see revival in our nation, but it's going to be abundance to overflow so that we can impact these nations also. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. And it says, And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honoured, all members rejoice with it. So we're all one. If one's down, we're all down. That's how it's supposed to be. If one suffers, we all suffer. That's certainly relevant to our local community, but also to our brothers and sisters around the world that are struggling right now. We have a responsibility. If they're suffering, then we suffer with them. If they're honoured, then we are honoured with them. Amen? And so I want to hopefully inspire everyone to get behind these projects. We're going to bring more information about how you can do that practically, certainly in prayer, financially. Like Andy said, you sow, he'll go. We'll have people that will go. We can't all go to Pakistan. We can't all go into some of these places. But what we can do is contribute. And so we can have foot soldiers on the ground to really bring impact in those areas. I want to invite everyone to stand to their feet. And I'll invite the band to come back up as well. I want to spend a little bit of time in prayer tonight to close. Does that sound all right? Pastor Alex um, said so we'll take up a love offering tonight and, and I appreciate that but what I really felt in my heart was that the love offering was to go to the missions. We've already raised uh, quite a lot which is awesome um, but to complete what we want to complete we need really, really need tens of thousands of dollars to be able to complete it. Um, we're already able to send 4,000 Australian dollars to Andy. He's back there again in May and we're going to see more children pulled out and he's employing, looking at employing more people on the ground there. 
as well. And so we want to be able to print out more books for uh, Pakistan and also be able to send a team there and, and gather hundreds of thousands of people to hear the gospel as well. So um, tonight, the love offering, every cent goes towards that. And I actually want to make all of our literature. Uh, so we have the Fortify books there, which we're translating for the Pakistani pastors. They're available tonight. And I want to make them freely available to us. And anything that you want to contribute or donate as a result of taking a free book tonight, all of that's also going to go towards this missions campaign as well. Does that sound all right? I might uh, invite in a moment Alex up to facilitate that um, offering uh, for this mission program for Pakistan and uh, India. It's an opportunity to help save more children and to impact uh, nations that have a very small percentage of Christians. And so, Alex, if you want to jump up and just facilitate um, just practically that offering, and then I want to finish with prayer. We're going to pray for Australia, we're going to pray for Pakistan, and we're going to pray for India. They're the nations at the moment that the Lord's highlighting. Does that sound all right? Awesome. Hey, Fire Church family, can we thank Pastor Dan for that word? You know, I'm, I'm reminded right away of a scripture in Philippians where the Apostle Paul sends a letter of gratitude to the church in Philippi. And uh, he, he says, thank you for your partnership with me in the gospel. And um, I'm, that's found, in, I think, in Philippians 1 and then in Philippians 4, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he says, it's not the gift that I seek from you, but it's for the credit that will abound in your account. As you partner with God in this, know that God is actually looking down from heaven. And the beautiful thing with God is there, there is an account and a reward waiting for us in eternity, but there's also a reward here on earth because He wants to entrust heaven's resources to those who are willing to be not a swamp where we just hoard it for ourselves, but to be a river. And I see prophetically in the Spirit that the river of God, that the banks will actually start to widen and increase as God looks from heaven and His eyes wander to and fro the earth. And He's wondering whose hearts are fully set on me to make myself strong on their behalf. There is a journey that we all are on here on earth to understand the goodness of God. And, and I'm really just scratching the surface with Jess and I. We give over and above 10%. We just did a budget, a proper budget in, in terms of our incomings and outgoings. And there's a certain percentage that we've seen that we can give over and above our 10%. But I know God wants to trust us with more so we can be a, a resource for things like this. We've seen over the years, um, the, the nations impacted through your giving. And we want to say, church, thank you. But we're saying also, it's just the beginning. We're 11 years old as a church, friends. I wonder what it would look like 50 years from now if we look back and see the glorious work of God, to see perhaps a rescue home, to see perhaps a educational institution to be established in these areas where kids are trafficked. I come from the Philippines. There's a high number of um, child trafficking happen happening in my home nation as well. And I've seen Christians come into my motherland and rescue these beautiful children, God's children, see them put in a loving home because these children are sold because of poverty and other issues going on in my home nation. But then these children are finding the love of Jesus, being cared for, being fed, being taught the life of God in scriptures, the promises of God. And now we're seeing children after many years rising up in their rightful place in life as doctors, nurses, accountants, preachers, and whatever God has called them to be. You know, we're at, I guess, by the sounds of it, at the infancy stages when it comes to this issue with us having an impact and stepping in. I'm actually not that aware until I heard from Pastor Dan. I, I, my heart's burning for the nation of India and Pakistan. We had the upper room pastor from India last week here on this platform morning and night. 
Uh, he's speaking at Upper Room Dallas very soon. A very trusted man by pa- Pastor Mike Miller and, and Pastor Laura, I think that's her name. But this is a mighty man of God, Pastor Joshua. And um, he told me, it's right. He told me firsthand, it's illegal to convert. They do things in, in, a, in, a, in a very savvy way to continue to expand the gospel. They are facing it very hard. He was actually very open here. There's a church near where they worship. Their mobs are just sent to mob lynch Christians. And the authorities just stand back and do nothing because they know there's no point. This is their reality. If we're not careful here in Victoria, that could be our reality too in the coming days. But as Pastor Dan said, we are to remember our brothers and sisters in chains. Amen. Who wants to be a channel of blessing for God? That we realize this prosperity that we have in our first world nation is attached to a purpose. Amen. And if God can find you faithful with the little that He gives us, all the much, and as we're led by the Spirit, now let's just close our eyes right now. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Speak to me right now. Whisper in my heart right now, our hearts, Lord. What is that amount that you want us to sow into to see the nation of Pakistan and India transformed for your glory? Lord, we know that there is only one way to heaven. Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Quran even says that the New Testament is the Word of God. And if that is the Word of God, therefore Jesus' words cancels out every other religion. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so God, we understand the responsibility at hand to preach the gospel, to be your hands and feet, to bring in practical help as well, to destroy the works of darkness that you've asked us to do in Scripture. So Lord, right now, speak to us. It might be a pledge amount. It might be a a direct transfer, whatever it is. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. Let us be found faithful so that you can entrust us with more so we can be a channel of blessing to those around us and those around the world suffering in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So if you want to um, give by card or write down a pledge, please just raise your hand and our ushers will get you a giving slip. There's details online. Um, if you give through Tithely, there's a, a, a different section you can give, I think, as a missions offering. Or otherwise, if you give directly to the BSB and account number, please just write in the description, missions. And every single cent and dollar will go towards this cause. Amen. Thank you so much, church. Awesome. Thanks, Pastor Alex. And just to repeat again, all of the literature is free tonight. I'm donating it to you, but if it if it's on your heart, instead of paying for the book to donate, uh, whatever you feel led, whatever you can afford, uh, all that's going to also go towards this mission. And I will make it a part of my portfolio to make sure everyone's updated with all of the cool things that take place in these two nations in the coming years. And there's going to be some really cool updates even this year as well. Does that sound all right? Someone shout out, Jesus is King. All right. <clears throat> Should we finish with some worship? Yeah? All right. Michael? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is wonderful. Counselor. Oh my dear God. Yes. His name Lift our hands one more time tonight for Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is wonderful. Counselor, oh my God. His name is Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. His name.
His name is Jesus. His name is wonderful. Counselor, oh my. His name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Magnify your name, Jesus. Wonderful God. We magnify your name, Jesus. Be glorified. Be glorified in the nations, God. We lift you up in the nations, Jesus. Wonderful Counselor. praise him one more time tonight we love you Jesus we love you Lord we thank you for what you're doing in our nation and in the nations that it's time for revival it doesn't matter how dark it is how bleak what the statistics say we know God that all things are possible with you Lord we believe for a great revival a great outpouring of your spirit God help us to continue to grow as a national ministry Lord Jesus to be able to bring real impact and real change, Lord God, in our local communities. That work continues and help us to continue to expand into different corners of the earth as part of the Great Commission, like in Matthew 28, to go into all the nations, to teach the nations, to disciple nations. And Lord God, help us to be just like you, to be moved with compassion as you lead us according to your will. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. Awesome to be back tonight, guys. God bless.